Hello, my name is Bill Blake, and today I'd like to talk with you about Ontario's Ring of Fire. In case you're wondering, I'm a former Director of Education in Northern Ontario. I have worked with the First Nations along the west coast of James Bay for some 10 years in helping them improve their educational systems, and I am now a Senior Consultant with Norquest Associates. Here is the province of Ontario. In area, it is over 1 million square miles, making it the second largest province in Canada after Quebec. Of that territory, more than 197,000 square miles is covered by water. This amounts to about one-third of the total world supply of fresh water. Living in this province are some 13.5 million people, most of whom live along the shores of the St. Lawrence River and the North Shores of the Great Lakes. Less than one person per square mile lives in the vast far north, this area up here. Since the early 1900s, the Precambrian rocks of the Canadian Shield, essentially south of this line, started to attract daring prospectors who discovered vast mineral wealth. Major finds included nickel and copper in the Sudbury area, gold in Kirkland Lake, silver and cobalt in cobalt, and gold and copper in the Timmins Porcupine area. Settlement and transportation networks followed, and today these areas continue to prosper. But the Canadian Shield continues to attract exploration for its underground riches. And in the late 1900s, diamonds were discovered near Attawabscat, right about here. They discovered 18 kimberlite pipes, of which 16 were diamond bearing. The Victor Mine is owned by De Beers Canada and is an open pit mine. It was started by De Beers to extract the diamonds from one of these kimberlite pipes. It is Ontario's first diamond mine and the second in Canada for De Beers. The mine reached full production in 2008 and in 2009 was named Mine of the Year by Mining Magazine. And exploration continues. This is the site of the Victor Mine. Then they started looking for more diamond deposits to the west of this site. What they found were deposits of copper and zinc. A flurry of prospecting led to further huge deposits of copper, nickel, gold, platinum, and the extremely rare mineral, chromite. This is the area here. It is so large and the deposits so valuable that the area was named the Ring of Fire after the Johnny Cash Ballad. Its size, at 5,120 square kilometers, is about two-thirds the size of Metro Toronto, including the counties of York, Peel, Halton, and Durham. Before we proceed further, we need to look at this area through the eyes of Google Earth to appreciate the vastness and emptiness. Over here is Attawapiskat. Here is the Victor Mine site. This is the location of McFalls Lake, which is in the heart of the Ring of Fire, and the two closest villages, Webequi and Nescantago. This area includes both the James Bay Lowlands and the Shield. The boundary line is about here, and you can see a slight change in the color of the vegetation. The Lowlands are low-lying swampy grounds and marshes, home to millions upon millions of Canada geese. The Shield is higher land with thinly soil-covered rock. A study done by the Ontario Chamber of Commerce in early 2014 determined the following. Our analysis shows that within the first 10 years of development, the Ring of Fire will make significant contributions to Ontario's economy and will generate up to $9.4 billion in gross domestic product. It will generate up to $6.2 billion for Ontario's mining industry. It will sustain up to 5,500 jobs annually that's full-time equivalents, and it will generate nearly $2 billion in government revenue, divided between the federal, provincial, and municipal governments. With so much riding on the results of this development and other resources that are yet to be discovered, we simply cannot afford to make mistakes. This study also found that tax revenues would benefit the federal, provincial, and municipal governments on a conservative estimate by a total of $1.8 billion for the first 10 years and $5.98 billion in the first 32 years. 
The study also indicated that some mining experts estimate the true value of future mineral deposits to be double or triple known current deposits. These tax figures would therefore increase dramatically. Nishnawabiaski Nation is a political organization representing 49 First Nation communities in this area of Northern Ontario, and they are grouped into seven tribal councils by region. All communities affected by the Ring of Fire uh, discoveries, shown with a green arrow, are members of the Mattawa First Nations Tribal Council. Those most affected by the find include Webequi, Neskantaga, and Martin Falls. There are at present three major projects in the Ring of Fire area. The first is Norant Resources Eagle's Nest Project. This deposit was discovered in 2007 and will likely be the first operating mine in the Ring of Fire. It is an underground mine that will produce nickel, copper, platinum, palladium, gold, and silver. The second major project is Cliffs Resources Black Thor Project. It is the largest known deposit of chromite in North America, and it will be an open pit mine similar to the Victor Diamond Mine and will have an ore processing facility on site. However, Cliffs have announced a suspension of this project effective December 31st, 2013, and its reopening is unknown. The third major player is KWG Resources Inc., whose deposits are known as Black Horse and Big Daddy. KWG Resources has been a pioneer in mineral exploration in the James Bay area since 1993, and these projects are chromite deposits. Because of its location, infrastructure will be critical to the success of this project. And the first component is transportation. The Ring of Fire is in an isolate northern area. There are no existing all-weather roads or rail service, so transporting the mine products will be a challenge. Norant proposes an all-season route that follows the present winter road to Pickle Lake, just about here. But Cliffs Resources wants a rail line to the CNR service near Nikina, about here. Ontario has offered a $1 billion subsidy for a transportation route, but no decision has been made yet on selecting a route. The second most important infrastructure is training and education. Education for First Nations students is under the jurisdiction of the federal government and generally is not comparable in quality to that supplied by the Ontario government. Educational resources and financing must be increased to at least equal Ontario educational guidelines and practices. That's only fair. At the post-secondary school level, emphasis must be on skills training related to employment in the mining industry and living in the far north. Also needed will be first aid and safety training applicable to living in remote areas. In August of 2013, a grant was received by the Government of Canada Skills and Partnership Fund to provide training and employment in mining for Mattawa First Nation members. Subsequently, a memo of understanding was signed by the participants, creating the Ring of Fire Aboriginal Training Alliance. Its key objective is to provide this training. Training will be provided in part in the First Nation communities and in part at Confederation College in Thunder Bay. Norant Resources was a signatory to this memo of understanding and is committed to this program. And hopefully with leadership and teamwork, success will be assured. Bob Ray, now Chief Negotiator for the Mattawa Tribal Council, cautioned that in order to benefit from these riches, locals will need professional training and education, including reliable electricity and internet access. He added, you've got to create the conditions under which people are able to participate in the workforce. In March 2014, Ontario and the nine Mattawa member First Nations signed an agreement to move forward with a negotiation process on a community-based regional approach to development in the Ring of Fire area. This will ensure that Ontario and the First Nations can work together to advance Ring of Fire opportunities, resource revenue sharing, economic supports, plus regional and community infrastructure needs. In summary, the Ring of Fire represents an incredible potential opportunity in terms of its contribution to the economy of Ontario and Canada 
and the social and economic development of this area. But it will also represent significant challenges in developing the potential of the area and enlisting the support of government agencies. Major challenges will include the development of road and rail transportation arteries, education and training facilities, medical housing and social challenges. However, the benefits to the people of this area and to the future of Ontario far outweigh the short-term challenges. So thank you for watching our short video on this important development in our far north. Undoubtedly, this is but the beginning of an ongoing story. But in the meantime, just remember, there is no point to the development of any land if the residents who occupy that land 